Um, I might start with the the first bit of news from today. Uh, Dennis Leamy joining up with uh, jo- joining up with Leinster uh, as contact skills coach. I might first of all just if you can explain maybe what is involved really in the role of, of a contact skills coach and what you would think Dennis is going to be bringing to the party. Yeah, obviously Hugh Hogan left us. Um, he was doing a similar role. Uh, so um, Dennis Leamy's stepped into that role. So both from a defensive point of view, looking at the tackle, uh, looking at the tackle area, uh, and from an attacking point of view in ball carrying, uh, ball placement, uh, everything around the ruck really. So um, he's been charged with that. Uh, and to date, you know, he's given a couple of presentations already. Um, he's definitely a passionate uh, rugby man. Um, so I, I have crossed paths with him in the past, albeit on a, on a rugby field, I think. But um, he's definitely got the passion for the, for the rugby, you know, so that comes out in his presentation. So um, looking forward to working alongside him. And then the other, the other bit of news, I suppose, that you would be central to over the last couple of months is Andrew Porter and Keane Healy doing the old switcheroo in the last couple of months. Um, how do you think that's been going so far? It's been going all right, you know, it's been going well. I mean, um, Andrew's had experience on the loose side previously. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's a conversation that's been ongoing since I've arrived, really, with regards to um, looking at the depth of uh, props, front row players, um, from a national perspective, etc. Um, and here in Leinster as well. But you, you want your best players on the field at the same time. So everybody's aware of the battle that goes um, between... Tig and, and Andrew really on the tight dead. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's um, it, I suppose it's, it's been a bit of a fresh air for both of them. A bit of fresh air, you know, with regards to getting a new experience, um, trying out certain uh, different ways of doing things. Um, and it's you know from a national perspective, if um, if they come through in time for the World Cup, then has that has massive implications to your world, the makeup of your World Cup squad. Um, so you, you haven't got to carry as many front row forwards possibly, you know. So, and we've seen uh, Trevor uh, Nikani for for the Springboks. You know, he's he's uh, he's proved to be worth his salt on both sides of the scrum as well. So it, it is doable. Um, there's not many people that are um, that are able to do it. Um, but uh, you know, to date they they've both embraced it really, and uh, you know they, they've gone well on the on the uh, on the matches as well. And I suppose specifically on Keane Healy's side, like you said there a minute ago, it, this idea is something that has been spoken about since you would have arrived a couple of years ago. But would that have been specifically Andrew moving back over to loose head and was Keane switching over to tight head? Is that more of a recent idea that kind of followed from, well, if we're putting one tight head over, we probably need to, to convert a loose head to a tight head. Was, was that just a natural development off the back of it? That's not, yeah, it was more recent, you know. Um, in fact, Keane put his hand up to give it a go. Um, uh, and, I, and I thought that was great, you know, because he's got the experience, he's got the strength. Um, uh, and you need you need that experience to sort of keep yourself going, you know. You're not going to get every scrum right. So um, when you do get a bad one, uh, you just need that mental toughness to sort of get up, dust yourself off and, and get back into it again, you know, without worrying about it too much. Um, and that Keane is of that nature, so... Uh, it's been great to see him uh, going well. Um, I think he's won a penalty in both uh, against the Bulls and the Dragons on the weekend as well. So, um, yeah, it, it's just good to see him go. Robin Nash, Nate here on Virgin Media News. Um, sorry, I missed the top of Neil's question about Dennis Leamy. Um, what sets him apart, do you think, as a young and up-and-coming coach? Well, he's very knowledgeable, very experienced. Um, he's held in high regard, you know, uh, because of his... Uh, because of his his career and and the type of player he was as well, really. Um, so um, he's already got got that uh, under his belt. Um, so when he when he speaks, he speaks from experience. He's got the knowledge, um, and you know, as I said, the presentations he's given so far has been very clear. The pictures that he's been showing, um, the message he's put across, uh, and. You know, to top it all off with a little bit of passion as well in his voice as well. So, um, yeah, just looking forward to working alongside him. And obviously he's worked there in the last few years in another role. Has there been much slagging that, you know, former Munster players coming into the Leinster setup? 
I think it's good to have a little bit of diversity, isn't it? You know, um, yeah, you, it, it's always going to happen in the rugby world. There's, there's not that many opportunities available for you to, to coach a top uh, a top flight team, you know, uh, anywhere. So um, you've got to grasp that opportunity when it comes along. And you've got to put your allegiances to one side sometimes and uh, just get on with it. Um, you know, Nobody in the right mind is going to turn an opportunity of working with uh, the playing squad that we have here at Leinster. So, um, no, I'm sure he'll enjoy it. And uh, he learned from the experience as well, you know. So, um, yeah, brilliant. And just finally for me, obviously last weekend, um, Leinster struggled to that uh, win um, on Sunday. Are you viewing that as a blip? Uh, viewing it as a learning curve, really. Um, you know, it's... You know, it's already been said with regards to the nature of the competition being different. Um, every team is going to be at its strongest uh, during the Autumn Internationals. There are no games going on. So every team is going to be at their strongest. Um, so they're going to be gunning. Um, they're gunning for us as well. Uh, but, you know, as far as the Dragons goes, I mean, they, they, they would have been hurting from their defeat against the Ospreys uh, at home in the opening game. Um, it was an opportunity for them to, to really head back and... Um, you know, treat the game like a like a cup final, really. And you know, they've uh, they've spent quite a bit bit of money on the ground, so you know the game uh, was able to flow um, well as much as it did with the weather. Um, but it was a massive challenge, massive challenge. You know, they they've gone through a rebuilding phase. They've they've got a good group of uh, coaches there, good group of players as well. Um, you know, the number of internationals on show or squad members. So, you know, they're, they're not an easy team to play uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And, um, you know, we, we, we should have um, gone more than one, one score ahead of them, really, to take, uh, to take the game away from them a little bit more. But whilst they were within one score, they were still in the hunt. And I think they, they got a bit of life out of that. So um, we made it hard for ourselves. But, um, you know, full credit to the Dragons as well. Um, I think they're going to... Cause a few upsets uh, playing at home this year. How are you doing? Good. Um, listen, you've a lot of experience of, of Welsh rugby over the years, and um, it seems to be on the up with the long-term regional issues being being uh, sorted out. Uh, c- can you can you see that change? Uh, well, there's been a, there's been a run of uh, good results recently. You know, uh, I mean, it's early days, um, but yeah, you'd, you'd like to think so. Um, you know, everybody is asking me since I've arrived here. You know, how come the national team has been so successful and the regional game hasn't been? So um, it's about time that uh, you know they put that right, really. So um, yes, yeah, you know, it, there's not there's, there isn't going to be an easy game. Um, I mean, we've got the Scarlets after Zebra, and uh, you know, underneath Dwayne Peel, he's gone back there. Um, you know he's in touch with the region. Uh, he's from the area, so he's going to get him going as well. He's going to get him fired up. He got Dai Young back in Cardiff. Um, so all of a sudden, you know, all the regions have got an identity, and uh, you know, reflected in in uh, the way they want to play as well. So um, yeah, from, obviously from a Welsh perspective, it's good to see. Just just going back to the Bulls game, um, um, there's a belief, a common belief that you know French teams don't travel well. Um, do do you think South African tr- teams travel well? And, and you know what can you expect when when you go down there? Um, it's a bit of a known, really. You know, I mean, um, you know, they they're without their uh, their best players currently, and they so um, yeah. Um, it's tough. It's tough for the for them, you know, because the the Springboks are going to be away for the majority of the time. So, and it's a learning curve anyway. Um, you know, they they're experiencing this for the first time, so they've 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 got to learn as they go as they go along. Um, but they're no mugs. I think they they learn those lessons pretty quickly. Um, you know, the way the game has been played and refereed, um, the travelling that they've got to do. So. Um, yeah, it's happening for the first time, so I dare say that they will uh, they'll improve as, as things go on. Okay. Uh, hi, Rob. Uh, uh, sorry, Corey here, uh, Dublin City Radio FM. Um, sorry, just uh, in relation to the South African teams, um, uh, you know, two games played and uh, only the Lions have won one match and the other three teams, Bulls, who are the Corey Cup champions, and... Um, 
the Sharks who were in the Curry Cup final and the Stormers. Uh, would you be of the opinion that they they look a bit tired? Um, I mean, they're on the road since April, and maybe uh, the season is, is stretching on a bit now with them coming over to the uh, Northern Hemisphere. Um, I, I haven't seen the, their games. Obviously, we we played the Bulls first up, and uh, you know they provided a good challenge for us. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's not for me to say really. I mean, um, like I said, they're doing everything's happening for the first time, so they've got to gri- got to get a grips with different challenges, etc. Um, you know, yeah, we we'll just have to wait and see on that. But I'm sure we, the best is yet to come from all of them. You know, they're, they're doing everything for the first time. Like I say, they've got a lot of different things to contend with. Um, so yeah, they give a bit of time to to get in, in some sort of uh, routine and rhythm. Okay, and um, uh, just in terms of when when, uh, when you have to travel to South Africa and that, uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be a tough enough trip. I mean, you're coming in towards uh, European Cup matches as well. So the season is going to sort of um, get a bit tougher. Yeah, again, it's it's something different that we've got to contend with as well. In that, you know, we've got another three games, and then we we've got a big break then of a of a month uh, without a game, um, and that's going to be something that's new. Um, so there's going to be a lot of players that would have pl- normally played in that window with the internationals being away. Uh, th- there are no games for them to be playing in. So, you know, we, we, we're aware of that and we're going to have to manage the squad accordingly to make sure that, you know, we keep everybody, um, you know, happy or match fit and um, just keep that edge about us. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a different feeling for everybody, um, you know, to, to go five games and have a month off. That's, that's something new. And, uh, you know, like you say, the next block is a, is a big, very important block with regards to Europe uh, coming into the equation and... Um, you know, then you got the into pro games as well. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be different, but um, we're looking forward to it.